So when it was my turn to give Tyrone a hug and a kiss and a welcome home, I leaned into his ear and I said, I hope you die. You deserve this and I hope you die. That is what I said to him. And then I backed up and I just stood and I looked at him. And he just gave me that cold, cold stare. After that, my sister said, what did you say? I told her what I said. And I turned around and I walked away because all of the children, keep in mind, they will, uh, we had to go outside and play. They didn't really want us in the house running in and out. You know, he just got home from the hospital. He's not well. So of course they want our greetings, but they don't want us in the way. So we go back outside and that's what we do. Now, remember we're at his family's house. So every weekend is a great big party at his family's house. So naturally his nieces and nephews and sisters and all the you know other people, the other relations, they're there with their children. So we go outside to play. Now, I don't know if y'all remember, back in my day, we had a new thing that had just come out and it was called the slip and slide. And everybody wanted the slip and slide. We couldn't afford it. And what would we do with a slip and slide in an apartment complex anyway? We have no lawn, so there's that. So, <clears throat> well, Ms. V, she did, but we did not have a slip and slide. But what we would do, we would get the sprinkler out. And the old time sprinklers before, they were like a box shaped unit like this. And they was, it was shaped like a rainbow. And it would go forward and then back. So it would get the front of the lawn and then the back of the lawn. And then you would have to run around and move it all about your lawn to make sure you got your lawn water, right? That was the back in the day. And then of course, a hose. So what do broke people do? We had the sprinkler and then we had the hose. So it was always a delight to run out there and play slip and slide so i walk out of the out of the house and now i'm out, outside and y'all i know y'all are gonna think poorly of me i know that i'm sorry let me do my mask right quick oh, my skincare routine at night the peter thomas roth cucumber gel mask uh so i know y'all are gonna think badly of me but if you do judge me please judge me the best and do understand at this time i was seven and eight years old don't judge mature me that's retelling the story. And by the way, I'm retelling it unedited. I'm telling you my thoughts and feelings from the eight-year-old that I was or the seven-year-old that I was at that time. So more mature me has a better understanding. Seven and eight-year-old me was a child, okay? So I was elated that I thought he was going to pass and I hoped that it was rather quickly. That was my hope and my prayer. And I told y'all that I had already said to him, you know, you deserve this and I hope you die. That's what I said. So when I'm outside playing, uh, a few of his nieces and of course nephews were out there as well. And I was eager to go and play slip and slide. And so I rounded up all the kids. I'm like, hey, do y'all want to go and play slip and slide? And everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They want, we want to play, we want to play. Except for this one. And I'm only going to call her K-Doll. Okay, except for K-Doll. When I walked up to K-Doll, I was literally jumping up and down, laughing hysterically, and having the time of my life. Okay, I really was. When I say jumping up and down, I mean, I literally jumped up into the air and I came back down on both feet. I was literally jumping up and down, having the time of my life, laughing hysterically as if this is just the best day ever and life could not be any better than it could at this particular moment. And for me, when I saw him laying in that bed and I was imagining all of the pain and the terror that he had gone through for uh, during that accident, I felt that it was just and deserved. Okay, I did. So, and again, this is seven year old me. I felt just that we, my sister and I had finally got justice for the harm, the fright and the terror that he did. Because in that single moment when he chose to have relations with my sister unconsentedly while she was still a child. I felt that that was wrong and not to mention, he changed my sister forever. She has never been the same since that morning, morning, night, whatever it was when he crept into our bedrooms and had his way uh, with children. And so I felt like 
what happened with him was deservedly so. And I finally felt that that was some justice. Okay, so I'm outside jumping up and down, skipping about, having the time of my life. And K-Doll uh, walked up to me. I hadn't gotten around to asking her yet if she wanted to play. I was going to, but I had not gotten there yet. She beat me to it with this conversation. So I was walking toward in her direction, and she came up to me, and she said, How can you be laughing? and jumping up and down and having a good time while Uncle Bill is laying there and he might die. Don't you know that Uncle Bill might die? Don't you know that he might die and you're out here laughing and jumping up and down? How can you be doing that? And she was just in tears, okay? K-Doll was absolutely in tears. She loved her Uncle Bill. And I'm not saying that her Uncle Bill was not worthy of her love. I, I don't want to imply that uh, grown-up me, however. But um, in that moment, my thoughts were directly after she said that, how could you be laughing? How could you be jumping up and down? Don't you know that Uncle Bill might die? My instant thought was, yes, and I can't wait until he does. That was my thought. And I didn't say anything to her. I just looked at her. And I never said anything to her. I didn't say anything. When she said that to me, I just stood there. And she was just broken. That was her Uncle Bill. And she loved him so, so much. And she saw me laughing hysterically, having a great old time, jumping up and down like life is one big party, acting as if I didn't care. And the truth is, I didn't. I didn't care. Because he shattered me and my sister's lives forever right in that moment. Like there is never a day that does that I don't relive those moments and if you think while sitting here this is just some story I was an absolute basket case okay a complete head case I still have night terrors okay I still have night terrors and I have assaulted Robert in our sleep when you know i have it has been horrible i this man has just gotten beat up in his dreams and i remember the first <laughs> it's not funny but uh i i was i was asleep and he just leapt out of bed so very quickly and he raced around to the other side of the bed and he's shaking me pamela pamela you're, you're sleeping wake up wake up you're dreaming pamela it's okay it's okay wake up and I wake up, I'm just, I, what is he doing here, you know, screaming and yelling right now? And I'm like, what's wrong? What's happening? I'm thinking something's going on with my daughter. And he says, no, you was kicking, he's showing me in, in his back. You were kicking me and punching me in the back while I was sleeping. You must have been having a bad dream. And I told him what my dream was. And always my dream was is dark, you know, and, and I'm always running and I'm trying to get away. I'm trying to fight this off. I'm trying to finally find my voice and say, no, that is what my, I'll get into my dreams later. But that's what they're always about. It's always me in absolute terror, running, 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 running and fighting back and trying to get away. So I had beaten him up in sleep while we slept because I was just really throwing punches and trying to help myself. So, uh, you know, this there's not a day that does that these that what what he did and it was and it's more, the story is much longer, uh much, much longer, uh, that what he did does not affect me. And I know if it's affected me this way, it's affecting my sister too. We sometimes talk about it. I wouldn't even say once a year, but we do. And I I understand that, you know, you all may judge me, but please just judge me the best. I just wanted him gone and out of our lives. And there is another huge piece to this story that I'm going to tell you about that. And before my mother left, months before my mother left uh, Tyrone, she had become pregnant with his child. Hmm. We'll hear my thoughts on that when I return.